So what is life? Well, this is a question that has received a great deal of attention. In fact, I have four humans up on the screen here who have written books basically um, titled, What is Life? The purpose of their books was to uh, explore life and attempt to define it. Um, my favorite one by far is Haldane in 1947 saying um, in his book entitled, What is Life? I'm not going to answer this question. <laughs> I love that because, dude, it's a really hard question to answer. And I think a big part of it is that we think it's easy. It should be easy to define what is alive. In fact, my oldest son, uh, took AP Bio, I think, last year, and we ended up in this like giant debate about um, whether or not viruses are alive. I look forward to engaging in that debate with you all as well. But when you look at like what some things we have an intuitive sense that they are alive, like the crocodile. If you came upon a crocodile, you would know it was alive. You might not know, I guess, if the crocodile were just chilling in the water like a log, you might not know he's alive. But the second he makes this face at you, you're going to know that he is alive. Um, you know, here we have a like, I love this picture. I think this bird is really beautiful. Um, definitely, we have a sense that, yeah, this is alive. This elephant team, like there's life here. And we, we look at it and we have um, some affection or some, we identify with these living creatures. Some living creatures we really identify with, um, the whole primate crew, like these are almost like family. And we will talk about how that is um, really close to being true. But the more similar critters are to us, the more likely we are to um, feel like kinship and affection and cuteness. But you know what? I, my, my youngest son is a big fan of insects and ants and raises cockroaches and cool things in his room. <clears throat> We beg him not to let them out to uh, be in our house. But, you know, we don't really identify as much. Like, th this may be, be a bit more of a stretch. Like, what are the similarities that we have in common with, like, a butterfly? Um, but we'll learn in this class that we actually have a lot in common. We also have a sense of things that aren't alive. Even though, like, I look at this waterfall, this river, and there's movement and there's change over time. Like there's definitely activity happening with the water, with the river itself, with the waterfall. But we have an intuitive sense that, yeah, that's, that's not alive, even though it's doing some of the things that living things do. Here's another picture of um, a, a waterfall. There's less life around this one. Um, that other, that previous picture had tons of living critters, green living critters around it. Um, but, you know, you still would look at this and go, yeah, that's not alive, even though it's moving. A desert, sands, not alive. Like it's, it's moving and it's changing. Um, it's dynamic, but it doesn't have the qualities of life. But look at something like this, like I actually have to refer to what, what is this thing? It's a crystal and crystals grow and they're minerals that change and, and kind of expand. And I look at this, I'm like, oh my gosh, it looks kind of like a lichen. It becomes um, sort of not easy, not intuitive to decide. It's beautiful and changing but for whatever reason, and we're going to look at those things, it, it isn't classified as living. This guy, mushrooms, funguses are alive. I would argue that in that previous picture, you know, I, I mentioned that it kind of looks like a lichen. We'll just go back to it. This looks lichen-ish. 
a lichen is a type of fungus. And so um, you have to be careful when you like, why is a lichen alive, but that beautiful ice crystal is not alive? And how do we know that something is like what there's got to be some characteristics that we can look at that are going to tell us whether or not something is alive. Some things we might be like, dude, no, please no, that is not alive, or this is definitely not alive. No, cannot possibly be alive, when in fact all of those things are absolutely alive. This is a shelf fungus that, you know, what does it do? How does it change? How do we know that that is a living thing? I show you all of these only to say that it makes sense that there is um, um, conversation, that there is discussion, that there is debate about what makes something alive enough so that there are current interesting um, books and conversations happening about this topic. We are going to attempt to get there. We are going to attempt to get some definitions. And the first thing we're going to do is look at um, a quality of all matter, but um, something that's going to help us define what life is. And that's the hierarchical organization of structures in all matter, but especially in living things.